let's go into um, this uh, these uh, revelations about Fox News because they're really insane. Look, for I've been doing this for 18 years now. 19 years? 2004, April 1st. Holy cow. In a month, it'll be, uh, it'll be almost, it'll be 19 years. And um, talking about how much of a Republican PR operation Fox News has been, has been uh, a consistent theme of, uh, of one of them of my work since that time. But this is like, it is so explicit in what we have seen in discovery because of this dominion lawsuit reminder dominion was this company that had done some um that uh, uh had ballot technology and as part of trump's sort of narrative about this lie that he the election was stolen from him they claimed uh, some of these lunatics that dominion somehow was like sending votes to germany into a server farm and there was like a czechoslovakian uh you know sort of like a swat team i mean you say it in this tone of voice it sounds ridiculous i know <laughs> i mean you didn't add the the hugo chavez part that's really the kind of the ghost of hugo chavez was somehow like instructing the czechoslovakian swat team, whatever that it was. ties everything together and everything was being uh completely whitewashed and acid washed and uh but so everybody knew this was a joke and apparently everybody at Fox knew this was a joke. But when you read into like the, their emails to each other and their text messages and you see how sort of nakedly they knew they were lying and their motivation for doing so, it is incredibly damning. This is a, a lawsuit for, what is it, $1.6 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, Fox News has something like, I don't know, $3 billion in cash. But to lose half of that cash, pretty bad. And it's not inconceivable that like you'd get even a, a higher award, right? I mean, I think like you could, the, 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 ultimately a jury could go like, actually, we want to punish them more uh, because this is really egregious. I mean, this is supposed to be, they pretend they're a news organization and, you know, say what you want about CNN. Obviously they're chasing dollars. Say what you want with MSNBC. Obviously they're chasing dollars, but it is so naked in, uh, in these Fox news documents. It's not an equivalent. There's it's no equivalence. Equivalent. Here is uh, CNN, a media reporter, Oliver Darcy uh, on uh, Anderson Cooper just we'll go through some of this deposition, but um, this is uh, it, he, he lays it out pretty explicitly here. And, you know, I was reading um, Atrios uh, at Eschaton for so long. Other reporters at other news organizations have protected Fox because they thought it was setting a precedent if they actually criticize Fox that just by the name Fox News meant that they were actually real journalists. This came up during the Obama administration when the Obama administration early on was basically saying like, you know, we're not going to take questions from Fox because you guys are a joke. And uh, the the media rallied around them and said, this is inappropriate. <laughs> we uh, need to be able to ask about the tan suit. But the the bottom line, the bottom line is if you're a news organization you need to be able to make assessments even about other news organizations. And there's just simply no way that you can look at these documents and claim that Fox news is actually a news organization by any definition of the term. Oliver, what is, what's in these filings that's new? I mean, there, this is really shocking stuff. Uh, there's a you lot. Were, in these. Even you were surprised. I mean, you've been following this stuff for years, you, but you were surprised at the things in this. I was reporting a lot about what Fox was doing in 2020, and I never really imagined that behind the scenes there would be this sort of damning information, these sort of admissions that were being made by top executives and top hosts like Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, uh, and so on and so forth. In, in this recent legal filing, what we have here is Rupert Murdoch uh, calling the Trump lies that were being pushed about the election damaging, calling them BS, and then also conceding that he knew that some of his top hosts at the network 
were peddling this lie to viewers. In a deposition that Dominion took, and I want to read to you part of it, they ask him, you are now aware that Fox endorsed at times this false notion of a stolen election. Murdoch says, not Fox, no, but maybe Lou Dobbs, a former <laughs> Fox host, Maria Bartiromo, as commentators. It's a weird split, splitting of hairs he does. And then they go through. Fox host Jeanine Pirro, I think so. Lou Dobbs, oh, a lot. Sean Hannity, a bit. And then it goes on, and, and they say, he, he says some of the commentators were endorsing it, and the Dominion lawyer says about their endorsement of a stolen election, yes, they endorsed, is what Rupert Murdoch says, all, all while he's behind the scenes saying he does not believe any of Trump's election lies. And a lot of these Fox hosts behind the scenes didn't seem to believe it either. No, they didn't. And I think this really actually exposes the fact that Fox is not at its core, a news network. News networks, um, they deliver the truth as they know it to viewers. They do the best job to attain the truth, and sometimes it's not perfect, but that's what they do. In this case, we know that behind the scenes, top personnel knew that the narrative they were pushing to viewers was not true. And we have evidence now that shows that they did this in search of profit so they didn't lose viewership to the smaller right And they right were afraid channels. of losing viewers. Exactly. They did this so they didn't lose viewers to the smaller right-wing channels that Trump was promoting after the election was called on Fox for Biden. Mr. Levine. I, I mean, Tucker Carlson was saying behind the scenes, this is a joke. And then, you know, in the same time period, calling on a Fox reporter to get fired for saying the same thing publicly because the stock price was going down. What's, that says everything you need to know. Yes. And I, with the interesting thing, too, about that testimony from Murdoch or the deposition is I, I, I can't help but think that that doesn't help him in the way that he thinks it does. Because if you're saying, well, it's not Fox News, Fox News is some type of entity separate from its hosts. Mm -hmm. But even if you grant that, Fox News controls both the hosts and whatever the other Fox News he's talking Fox about. Fox Business, where they put the crazies well, like but, Blue Dog and Hannity, but, Yeah, but Hannity is on, is on, and he says a bit. Yeah. And so if there's some in, in Murdoch's mind, like the heart of Fox News, the brain of Fox News did not endorse it, but some of the other Fox News commentators did. That to me is not exculpatory. That's actually worse because then it becomes clear that that the brain trust of Fox News knew that this was false. And yet they allowed their representatives to go out into and publish this stuff essentially by saying it on their channel. I, I, I mean, I don't think any of that is exculpatory. And I and I honestly have to wonder, like. You know, Murdoch is, what, 90, 91? Yeah. And, you know, again, I'm a little bit biased because I've been I've been spending some time with some, you know, my my my, my uh, aging parents and around uh, people. And, and, and I, you know, I've known uh, I've I've had relatives who live into their 90s and they're pretty sharp, but they're not that sharp. And uh, maybe Murdoch is, you know, uh, is is playing some type of like, you know, 18 dimensional chess. But that seems to me to be uh, not, anything but exculpatory. Um, at one point, put up this. Uh, uh, yeah, this Gertz uh, um, a thread. Uh, Matt Gertz from Media Matters was was uh, tweeting through some of it. And some of this is amazing. This part <laughs> right here. Um, this is. uh this is the, there was a question as to why Murdoch, uh, why Fox continued to give a platform to Mike Lindell. This is the My Pillow guy, and um, you know, of course, it, slash it, it, elections expert, it, it, slash election <laughs> expert. Um, and and he hasn't given up on this. He's still he's gonna he's going full time. In fact, I should just say as a side note. Notice he's introduced my pillow too, mm. which is oh, like my pillow, but even better. It's and um, I, I think he is like he 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 really wanted to. Uh, he he needs to raise some money. Uh, yeah, let's put it this way. So um, anyway, so, I think there's been a breakthrough in pillow technology just in the nick of time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
It's 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 filled with all the shredded ballads. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and stuff he doesn't want in Discovery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be amazing if they had to, they yeah. had to do a recall of all the My Pillow twos to get back the documents Full that he, shredded they, documents. he was hiding. Yeah. So, um, somebody uh, said, I don't know who the she refers to. She also uh, suggested that shows book Lindell because he would, quote, get ratings. On January 26, 2021, I mean. Tucker Carlson had Lindell on to uh, air to spread lies about Dominion. Now, this was, you know, uh, this is uh, days after the, well, uh, th th two weeks after uh, January 6th. Uh, Carlson and his team gave advance notice to the appearance only to Scott. This is a... Um, Suzanne Scott. Suzanne Scott. Yeah. This is uh, an exec at Fox News. But uh, to executive uh, Fox uh, executive Raj Shaw. Now, Raj Shaw was the brand protector. Right. Now, we, we, of course, have multiple people here at uh, the Majority Report whose uh, sole job is to protect our brand. Uh, and they're constantly monitoring your Twitter feeds mm -hmm. and our uh, Instagram comments and YouTube comments to make sure that we're doing exactly what you people want us to do at any given time. <laughs> but that's literally what this guy's job was to measure, like, are people mad? Are, 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 is our audience mad at us for telling them the truth? And if they are, we need to fix that. Now, I'm unclear why there's a redaction in any of this. Like, who redacted this and what it's about? But it's weird. Well, we might get more information if Fox keeps uh, countering, which God only uh, yes, hopes Yes, and I would do. imagine at one point, like, you know, uh, this stuff is going to get released in some fashion. Like, the, the, there some news organizations say, like, we want the redactions back. Um, so uh, Murdoch testifies... Uh, the man is on every night. He's speaking about uh, Mike Lindell pays us a lot of money. At first you think it's comic and then you get bored and irritated. <laughs> now I'm not here to argue with Rupert Murdoch, but I think at first you think it's comic and then you continue to think it's comic. Murdoch confirmed that he could tell FNN that's Fox News Network, to stop running Lindell's advertisements, quote, but I'm not about to. And when asked why Fox continues to give a platform to Lindell, who continues to this day to spout lies about Dominion, Murdoch agreed that, quote, it's not, a, it's not red or blue. In other words, it's not about being Democratic or Republican. It's about green. Mm-hmm. But and can I just say, like, only a certain type, only red um, feeds the green. their green because yeah. they're so concerned with their brand. Well, that's the thing, is that it's not exactly. It's not just about uh, they're going after money. He may say it's not ideological, but it does mean we're going to lie to our Republican voters to get the money. Again, not as ex exculpatory as he thinks. It doesn't matter. Let's put it this way. It doesn't matter why Fox News functions as a PR firm for the Republican Party. They may be ideologically aligned or maybe not. The point is it does. Whether it's just because he wants money or because he has other interests, which of course he does. Yeah. Um, the intention is irrelevant for at least the purpose of this lawsuit. Like, a line like it's not red or blue. And also for the purposes of like people understanding what this operation is. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like that red or blue but green line, that sounds like something he cooked up with his lawyers. Yeah, because I mean, he has well, he has a what fiduciary duty to the shareholders, right? He has to make it seem yeah. like this is a pro profit motive. So he's speaking to multiple audiences here. But here is where if things get a little bit trickier to make to maintain this uh, defense that Murdoch has um, during. And this is uh, later in the uh, thing. And I don't know if this is a uh, I don't know if it's part of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here it is. OK. So during Trump's campaign. Mm. Now, there's I want you to think about what, where's the money involved in this? Where's the green where is where is this about shareholder, you know, a f fiduciary responsibility to my shareholders? During Trump's campaign, Rupert 
provided Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner with Fox confidential information about Biden's ads, Mm -hmm. along with debate strategy. Now, I don't know what debate strategy they would have in terms of like Biden's debate strategy. Maybe it was just reporting that they got on background or maybe it was just giving him debate strategy advice. But if you, the whole point of, of like hiding what your ads are from your opponent is, um, to keep them from being countered. I mean, this is... But so strategy could be like, here's what he's going to say in his next ad, do something that undercuts it. Exactly. Well, this was kind of the critique of, didn't Donna Brazil do this leak? We found out that she leaked yeah. information to the Hillary Clinton campaign about uh, a the A question debate. in the debate. Yeah. Right. Um, but this is on a much larger scale because Murdoch doesn't just own Fox News and Fox Business. He's the owner of Fox and they have affiliates that are wide reaching and supposedly nonpartisan. And I I don't know if Biden was running ads on Fox News proper or if he was running ads on say like Fox 5 in New York or Fox in Indiana or whatever, you know? Um that's that's uh, a misuse of power uh in every sense of the word. And of course, uh, the uh debate strategy probably came with like there was Fox did run one at least one debate if I remember correctly, Chris mm-hmm. Wallace was uh there and that type of stuff. Now, People uh, 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 feasted on Donna Brazil's like telling them, telling the the Clinton campaign one of the most obvious questions that was asked. I can't remember what it was, but it really honestly was one of the most obvious. Still questions. Still unethical, but uh, it's completely m- unethical. Micro compared to this. <laughs> um, the uh, there was more of this. Scott again. This speaking of uh, the um, uh, Suzanne Scott. Um. Had a long talk with both Rupert and Lachlan uh, Murdoch, that's the son. They discussed the mounting viewer backlash to Fox and how to win back viewers, including by not booking Democratic guests. I mean, a news organization shouldn't really just sort of cater to its audience by by specifically saying we're just not going to have representatives from a specific party on the uh, on the uh, on the TV. Um, and the direction that Fox should take. Rupert conceded in that conversation. They also spoke about the future of Fox going forward. In other words, this news organization, like, you know, we're, we're going to basically just cater to what our audience wants. So funny, the projection, because they act like this is what's happening on the other side mm-hmm. of the aisle. Like the, the liberals, they don't want to hear any opinions from other people. Like, <laughs> Meanwhile, they're having to like protect their brand by saying, okay, no more Democrats. Safe space for you. Um, Lachlan continued to advise on how Fox should cover the news related to the 2020 presidential election. For instance, he told Scott, again, Suzanne Scott, on November 14th during Fox's coverage of a rally in support of Donald Trump. Again, this is like, this is after the fact, right? Mm. News guys have to be careful how they cover this rally. So far, some of the side comments are slightly anti, and they shouldn't be. Again, what is Donald Trump doing at this rally? He's going on saying Dominion uh, lied, and there was like a Czechoslovakian hit squad that was taking out ballots in in Germany. And uh, this the narrative should be, this is a huge celebration of the president. Scott responded, yes, thanks. Um. Leland Vittert, who is a, I guess, another Fox person getting chewed out by Fox executives for not being uh, pro, um, pro Trump enough. He's no longer at the network. He's at News Nation now. Ah, because <laughs> wonder why. Uh, but again, here's uh, Rupert Murdoch um, uh, saying a little bit later. Could you have said to Suzanne Scott, this is during the deposition. To, or to the host, stop putting Rudy Giuliani on the air. Remember, Rudy Giuliani was one of the biggest, like, sort of like um, uh, uh, election deniers. Election deniers, and also sort of like you know uh, conspiracy theorists about this. Rupert confirmed that he could have told Scott stop hosting Sidney Powell. Um, quote, but I didn't. And then he wrote, and and, and about Giuliani said, I could have, but I didn't. 
I mean, that, are we really to believe that Sidney Powell meant so much money to Fox News that having her continued presence on air? It's not about Sidney Powell. Yeah. It's but, about what she represents. Right, exactly. The exactly. political project. It's the brand. Exactly. Yes. It's the brand. It's I the mean, brand protection. Um, that was what they needed to do. They needed to protect the brand, and she was the lunatic. Now, then they have another problem. Because, again, they need to prove that they really... They didn't know what they were doing was fake. In a January 12th email, uh, Rupert Murdoch tells Paul Ryan, who sits on the board of Fox News, that the insurrection was a wake-up call for Hannity, who has been privately disgusted by Trump for weeks, mm. but was scared to lose viewers. That is fascinating because Hannity was the number one proxy for Trump, texting back and forth with his chief of staff at the time, trying to wrangle them in on January 6th, like giving advice to people in the Trump White House. They're close. So when Trump sees that, he might not be too happy. And that might explain, by the way, some of the fixation on Paul Ryan. He's been truth socialing about Paul Ryan out of nowhere. Paul Ryan must be making some uh, some moves behind the scenes that we might not know about. Um, all of these board members were writing stuff like, um, I do think Fox news needs a court's correction. Uh, Rupert, R Rupert responded, Fox news, very busy pivoting. Uh, we want to make Trump a non-person. <laughs> um, Fox I'm telling my boss, I'm busy pivoting. Yeah. <laughs> Fox Corp board member and Diaz told Rupert and Lachlan that quote, considering how important Fox news has been as a megaphone for Donald Trump. Directly or indirectly, I believe the time has come for Fox News or for you, Lachlan, to take a stance. It is an existential moment for the nation and for Fox News as a brand. Um, Lachlan emailed Rupert to discuss because they're trying to fend off this uh, board member. Just tell her that we've been talking internally and intensely along these lines. And Fox News, which called the election correctly, is pivoting as fast as possible. We have to lead our viewers, which is uh, not as easy as it might seem. <laughs> We're pivoting from a line to them and sort of uh, validating all their worst paranoia to uh, trying to bring them back into the yeah. fold of reality. On January 12th, Paul Ryan discussed with Rupert and Lachlan in an article uh, called, uh, 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 call, uh, discussed an article called The Alternate Reality Machine about how the right wing media ecosystem created an alternative reality for those who had come to rely on its news outlets for news. Ryan believed that, quote, some high percentage of Americans, end quote, thought the election was stolen, quote, because they got a diet of information telling them the election was stolen from what they believed were credible sources. I mean, think about that now for a moment. So Paul Ryan, who sits on the board, is saying that a significant percentage of Americans have a complete false notion of what's going on in this country because what they believe are credible sources. Paul Ryan's not sitting at a bar talking about general media outlets. He's talking about Fox News. And if they believe that Fox News was a credible vo uh, uh, a source, but they, they have a diet of misinformation, then what Paul Ryan is saying is Fox News is not a credible source. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, then, and then again, Rupert says, thanks, Paul. It's a wake-up call for Hannity. That's when he says who's been privately uh, uh, disgusted. I mean, it, Paul Ryan is such a joke, though. Like, this entire media uh, apparatus and its, its disinformation campaign was immensely helpful to him in his time as Speaker of the House. Without like, a doubt. He was riding... Not just Speaker he, of the House. His whole career. His whole career. But he was riding the uh, birtherism that was being peddled on Fox News to um, big gains for the Republicans during Obama's presidency. That was conspiracy theorists and lies. Like, this, the, he's a disgusting man. The, the sickness of him now saying that the conspiracy theories... Uh, uh, about the election or somehow worse than what he was uh, using for his own political benefit at the time. I mean, give me a break, dude. Of course. Uh, Fox Corporation's uh, CLPO. I'm not sure what is that. Is it like a, another brand person? Viet Din confirmed that responsibility for publication, that means like, you know, when they're broadcasting stuff, extends up and down the chain of command and those, quote, with the power to exercise control, had, quote, an obligation to, 
and quote, prevent guests from telling lies. And the thing is, you can't do it. Like, you know, in the moment, if a specific guest comes on and lies, all right, you don't have that person back. That's the point. Question from what this is the lawyers from Dominion. If any of the people in that chain of command had the power to exercise over control over Lou Dobbs show knew that what Sidney Powell was alleging was false. Didn't they have an obligation to prevent her from coming on the show to tell those lies? In other words, it's not she just came on once. She came on repeatedly over and over again. Answer, yes. The uh, the CLPO uh, stands for Chief Legal and Policy Officer, so exactly. internal counsel. So in other words, you know what defamation means, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do, because that's my job. I'm the guy who's in... Bo- Who has obligation to stop this? Everybody in the organization. But when the executives at Fox News knew that the hosts of the show are broadcasting allegations that the executives know or believe to be false, in that situation, the executives have an obligation to act, right? Now, remember, you have all this stuff laid out with like at least three or four top executives, including Rupert Murdoch and Lachlan Murdoch. And members of the board who are telling them they know all this stuff is garbage. You know, that's when Murdoch is saying, like, well, Fox News, like the brain trust knew. We weren't endorsing it. The executives have an obligation to act if they're within the chain of command. And if they if they come to that knowledge, yes. And by act, that means to put a stop to it, right? They do have an obligation under those circumstances, the executives do in the chain of command, to put a stop to those broadcasts. Right, sir? That's the question. Yes, to prevent and correct known falsehoods. Hmm. Is that like a, what kind of obligation is that? It's not a legal obligation, is it? Uh, Uh, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that was the uh that's the, a, it's the lawyer talking that's the, yeah. the the in the succession world that's the jerry of this right yep. that's the that i mean they have to say that public they're that person's going to be very careful about that as well but it kind of throws everyone else under the bus yeah are they going to throw their hosts under the bus to protect the corporation well so dobbs it sort of seems fired. like that a little bit i mean dobbs is gone yeah part of romo uh she's hanging by a thread puro was taken off the air at one point i guess apparently during the uh the the broadcast of the election because they were just too worried she was like losing it and she also she's was, just too drunk to be on air <laughs> and, i mean a lot of joking um, joking joking and uh they, i mean it, it's quite clear they're just terrified of all this stuff getting out there um <laughs> at one point at his deposition lachlan murdoch could not recall a single instance when Fox News Network did not follow one of his suggestions. That's establishing the the authority that they had to end this if they wanted to. And they didn't do any of this. It's also hilarious because, like, when... It, it, I remember the years when they were trying to pretend, like, the executives, the Murdochs, had kind of no editorial input on, uh, on what was going on over yep. there. Those days are long gone. And, you know, I mean, we had briefly touched on some of the uh, text messages going back and forth between, like, uh, Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity. The worst of which was when there was an instance when a Fox News reporter um, fact-checked a tweet by uh, Donald Trump. And Tucker Carlson said, did you see what she's doing? She's got to get fired right now. This is no joke. Our stock is dropping. I mean, you know, l- let's put it this way. Like, I-, I get, you know, that the coming from talk radio where it's like, it's just like, you know, some form of, uh, of WWE wrestling. Um, I understand these dynamics. There is an expectation that these news organizations that have far more money and make far more money have a higher bar threshold to cover. I mean, they call themselves news, right? You know, Limbaugh always famously said, I'm, I'm an entertainer, et cetera, et cetera, on like a talk radio. You cannot be a critic of the media and pretend that Fox News is not a joke. You just simply can't. I mean, it really is amazing. Um, 
it really is amazing how uh, explicit this was and is. And I look forward to uh, their bankruptcy more. proceedings. I hope that happens. Oh, my God. That would be fun. You know, if Rupert survives long enough to see his empire. Oh, that would be flames. wonderful. But um, the the fact that they're counter, they're, they're making some sort of counterclaim I saw yesterday. Doesn't Unclear. seem doesn't seem smart, but it's not in their it's not in their nature to settle. There you go. And so that's good for us. For us, in terms of like viewers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we're being explicit about it, but like, I mean, it's also good for us because I want to see more. I want to see under the hood as much as possible, and I want the public to see it. Yeah. Let's get Dobbs dragged in there and have him justify himself yes. a little bit. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, it's going to be interesting to see like it, 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 what strategy is goes from here because, and I also want to see what's under those redactions. Like, yeah, it's like the Guantanamo diaries over here. Exactly. <laughs>